My name is Dr. Dennis Daniels. I serve as professor and director of the Texas Undergraduate Medical Academy here at Prairie View and also professor in the College of Medicine for Texas A&M University College Station. My first date was March 15th, 2004, so I'm coming up on 16 years. My previous position in Georgia, initially I served as Senior Deputy Director for Fulton County Department of Health and Wellness uh, there in Georgia, and my task was to provide executive leadership uh, to uh, individuals uh, in the areas of personal population and clinical health services which if we were to roll that out to some extent, it would mean that I oversaw 27 medical clinics, six dental clinics, six mobile units, and more than 600 employees. And then when I assumed the role of interim director, it was closer to 800 employees. Well, COVID-19, um, we trace it back um, to January 30th of 2020 is when the World Health Organization identified it as an official public health emergency of international importance. And shortly after that, January 31st, 2020, is when the Secretary of Health and Human Services uh, identified it as a concern uh, for the United States as well. And initially, it was associated with uh, the thought of some exposure to foods and things of that nature. However, uh, over time, very quickly, it spread without that interaction in other countries, including the United States. And that seemed to indicate then that it was now spread person to person. The most vulnerable populations is how we respond to that. Those groups of individuals tend to be individuals who are um, elderly, as we've seen in Washington State there with the nursing home facility um, or long-term care facility. Beyond that, individuals who may have a compromised immune system in some way due to perhaps heart disease or diabetes. I think people should be concerned but not panicked and the reason is because a number of well-documented, tried and true measures, such as washing of hands, covering your nose and mouth when you sneeze and cough uh, into a tissue, uh, that is when you're sneezing, and uh, disposing of it in a receptacle, and then uh, washing your hands, preferably with soap and water, but if not, then hand sanitizer immediately. Those measures, along with a few others, uh, help stem the tide of illnesses that are spread in this way. I have had the uh, opportunity to be uh, a part of other scares, if you will, public health concerns, uh, such as West Nile, uh, equally alarming in many respects, but different because of the mode of transmission. That is, the culprit was a mosquito bite. Uh, and uh, so individuals would wear long sleeve shirts and um, would wear propellant and those types of things. Um, but yes, it was serious. There were individuals who became ill. Some of the same populations, however, were of concern then. That would be individuals who were perhaps a little bit more advanced in age, um, individuals that might have a compromised immune system. Well, the first thing is if you are sick, uh, stay home. Uh, get in contact with your doctor, call your doctor's office first, and follow the instructions that are given. Uh, then you want to make sure that you separate yourself from individuals uh, and pets. Um, you want to, again, wash your hands frequently. Uh, when you cough and sneeze, again, do so in a tissue. Uh, dispose of the tissue appropriately. You want to avoid sharing uh, personal items, uh, such as uh, forks and spoons with other individuals or cups with other individuals. Um, and beyond that, you want to make sure that you're taking those precautions uh, that include also disinfecting daily, routinely, 
high touch areas. And by high touch areas, an example would be a doorknob. Well, the main thing uh, that I would suggest with the public is where we began, and that is be concerned, yes, but not panic. 